What's up guys? We're back. Part two of the MR slot car build series. Today we're going to put together the chassis and the pod and assemble it with some pieces here. And I'm also going to go through some of the pieces that I've already replaced to make the car faster. Let's get into it. First thing is we've established that we have a flat chassis, right? We flattened it last time using the oven method. And the first thing I'm going to do is assemble the front end. These Mazzetti cars have an independent front end assembly that can be swapped out. So what I've done is I've actually upgraded the hardware here from the plastic to these really, really nice stainless uh, pieces of hardware. What those are, are slotting plus uh, M2 by six Torx screws, part number SP153306, and the mini uh, mini lock nuts, which are SP151312, and they are M2 stainless lock nuts. So basically, I've just done that just to make sure that those hold on throughout the race, because you know we don't want the front end falling apart during the race. So that's the first thing I've done. I've assembled that. Those are really nice. They use the T6 right here. Very nice hardware. So now that we've got that in place, <clears throat> I'm gonna attach the pod. And what I'm going to use for the pod is I'm gonna use slotted small head brass screws. And they look like this right here. Go. So I'm gonna put these screws in. And one other thing that I've done is I've actually used, um, I'm not sure you guys are familiar with the slotted cars, but they come with small washers. And what I've actually done is underneath the head of the screw on all the different screws, I've used that washer. And what that helps me do is get the float uh, as smooth as possible. So I'm gonna do the next, uh, the side screw here. Just pop it in there. And for right now, I'm just going to tighten these down just so that they are snug because we don't need to really worry about the pod movement right now. So for these side ones, I've used the slightly longer small head screw and that helps make sure that it goes through the top there. So we've got those. Last one is the back. All right. So these are, these are snug, but they are not over tightened. You never want to over tighten them because then you may strip out those areas and then you're just got to go through a new pod. So the next thing we're going to do now that the pod is in place is we are going to install the guide. So the guide we're using here is the MR slot car wood track guide. It is the MR 2202 guide and I already have one here that's already been deburred. And basically what I've done is just like on the chassis, I've gone and I've deburred all the edges and there's some little spots here that I've done. And that way you make sure that the guide fits really, really nice and smooth. So, let's see here, I'm gonna take my screw. And one trick that I like to use is, I, I like to use as few spacers as possible. I know some people like to really um, get the guide down on the track, but one of the tricks that I've been figuring out is that I actually really like for the front tires to set the ride height on the car and not the guide. And I'll explain that later. So now that we've got the guide in place, and again, all we're doing is just assembling things right now. We are not getting them set up perfectly just yet. So the next step is that we are going to install the front wheels. Uh, the front wheels are MR slot car, uh, MR7052, 16.5 by 8.2. This car actually comes with 17 millimeter wheels, but in order to get the car lower, we're going to use these. I already have a set out right here, and I'll show you the first thing I wanna do is I want to make sure that these wheels are perfectly true. So if you come in here, I generally like to just spin them on an axle just to make sure that they don't wobble. So I've already checked these and they are both pretty good. Uh, so I think that they are ready to go. <clears throat> so the first thing that I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to scuff these uh, to make sure that the front tires stay on. So I'm going to attach them to my axle on Dremel, and then I'm going to use some Scotch-Brite to scuff where the tire will be glued to the wheel. And I'm going to scuff where the super glue will attach the wheel to the tire. And that way make sure that I have uh, as good of a connection as possible with the, with the glue. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use my little foam sanding pad here. You can use Scotch-Brite, basically anything abrasive. And I'm just gonna turn this on. And that's basically all you want. It's just, you can see it's kind of, it's shined up a little bit, but that just indicates that we've got, uh, we've scuffed that area. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so the next step here is I want to test fit the front wheels to see how they're gonna sit in the car and to see what I'll need to do in terms of front tires. So I have here my slotting plus 55 millimeter, not hollow axle. Um, this is kind of like the, for the rules, we have to run a not hollow axle. So I'm gonna put this through here and I will attach this here. And again, I'm, I'm kind of just blueprinting the car right now, so I'm not gonna worry about <clears throat> every little detail here. I'm gonna come in here and I can see that <clears throat> I don't have much room, right? So the front tire cannot go any higher than this. So what I'm gonna need to do is actually run a really low profile tire in order to make sure that the front end stays low. So what I've chosen <clears throat> is the slotted uh, PT15, which is the zero grip 17 by 10 uh, super low profile zero grip front tire. So I got a couple of those. I'm going to put them on there and see how it works. Okay, so now that we've got the tires on the wheels, you're going to see that there's really no, there's not really much room to go lower, but the car sits up just a little bit more. So we're gonna to want to glue these and then make sure that we true them so that the car gets as low as possible. So the next step here, now that we have the guide, we have the front tires and wheels in just mocked up, we are going to mock up the, the rear end. So I have my second slotting plus 55 millimeter axle. I'm gonna drop it in here. And these are actually quite, quite nice. So I'm not too concerned about the alignment or anything. Uh, what I will do before the race though, is I will definitely put uh, a bead of super glue across these, uh, or I may even take them out and put super glue all the way around so that those bushings don't move. That's really important uh, in, a, in a race car is making sure that you, um, the, last, the last thing you want is the upright to break or the, uh, the bushing to pop out. So the car comes stock with a 29 tooth spur gear and it's, it's plastic and mine was actually unfortunately cracked due to age or whatever. So I'm immediately replacing it with a 27 tooth 15.5 millimeter MR racing uh, MR slot car angle winder spur gear. And what I found is that <clears throat> um, my car in particular needs uh, one or two 332nd axle spacers between the gear and the bushing. So I'm gonna put that in there right now. And I'm gonna try to just get the uh, axle sort of aligned in the middle here, okay. And just get that a little snug. and just wanna make sure that it doesn't get in the way, which it does not. So we're good there. <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure if this race allows for wheel collars, but what I've found is that a, I believe this is an NSR four millimeter, it's an NSR four millimeter axle spacer. And this works perfectly on this side of the car right there. So <clears throat> that helps. And if we put the wheel on there, you'll see I can mock this up real quick. So we'll get the body here. 
and you'll see with that spacer, we get just flush. So that's the correct setup there. And then in the fronts, we can actually see that the fronts are just a little in. So what we could do in the fronts is actually grab a little washer here. So let's grab one of these guys. So I'm actually going to use uh, scale auto little spacers, but you know, obviously that's not, uh, you don't need to use those. That's just a, a nice size for me to easily grab. I think they are probably two millimeters. So we're just going to throw those on there just to see how that fits. And again, just to reiterate, we're just kind of blueprinting the car right now. We're not gonna, we're not gonna build it and just put it on the track. We're gonna kind of take our time, take measurements, make sure that we're doing it correctly. And here you'll see that those spacers probably need to be shaved just a little teeny bit, or maybe I need to take a little bit off the tires, but that's correct. So <clears throat> we got our two millimeter spacers here in the front end, and we got our four millimeter spacer in the back end. I'm also running uh, MR slot car rear Aria air wheels, uh, which are the 15.8 by 10, I believe. Um, and I will probably, um, I'll probably run the foam inserts in those as well, if we can ever get them from Walt. Uh, Walt, if you're out there, if I need to order them directly, if I need to order them directly from you, I'm willing to pay a premium. I will like to, ex I would like to explain uh, why I am widening the front end. So. One of the key principles of how a slot car works is that we really want all four corners to be as wide as possible for stability. What you might notice if the car has a narrow front end and a wide rear end, the car may dip when you're sort of like mid corner, the car might tilt, uh, causing you to turtle as we call it, where you flip. Um, the, probably in theory, what I believe the most stable slot car would actually be a narrow rear end and a really wide uh, front end. So what we're trying to do is emulate that as much as possible within the rules, and that's why we run the spacers in the front. Do you need to run them? No, absolutely not. Do I run them? Absolutely, yes. Every little thing like that makes a difference in the cumulative positive benefit for the car, right? Like when you build a race car, you're not going to find a silver bullet. And that's something, again, I hit on in the last video, but one of the many things that I like to tell uh, people who ask me is that a slot car going fast is um, the culmination of many small little things that you do to make sure that the car is working good. It's never just one thing. It's always 20 different tiny things that lead up to just enough to get you a lap or two laps or three laps. So this is the motor for this car. Uh, it is a slotted 21,000 RPM flat six. The motor for this race is going to be a handout. So basically we're gonna sign up for the race and Marco will be uh, mailing us out motors that we will have to buy. You'll probably be able to buy one to three. So <clears throat> for this exercise that we're doing right now, this is not my race motor. This is the motor that came with the car, but I am going to install it to uh, just make sure that the gear mesh is correct and also mock up the wiring. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this end, slide it through the end bell hole there and just slide it down. And I'm gonna make sure that it's flush here. And you'll also notice that it does have the ability to run a set screw or a, a screw here, which we are definitely gonna do. And once the motor is selected for the race, I'm actually also going to take some uh, probably B7000, which is a clear adhesive, and run it along the, the base here, and run it along the base here so that the motor is in place uh, for the race. So in terms of the gear mesh here, we got the gears, and you'll see that's, that's probably a lot of slack. So as I mentioned before, I do have that single spacer here on the back side. I'll probably add another spacer just to make sure that that is correct, but that should be good to go once I add that second spacer. 
So with all the cars that I run at Electric Dreams, I usually run some ballast, and this class is gonna be no different. I have a little ballast spot here, and then I also, uh, what I've really liked to run, especially in the Group C cars, is one of the slotted ballasts uh, here in the front and the back. So what I find that I really like a little bit here and a little bit back there. And these are the different types of ballasts that um, I, I might run. Here is a slotted tungsten puck. It's the small one, it's 0.6 grams. And then we have the next size up, which is 1.9, almost two grams. Here we have the slotted dog bone for the Group C cars or the slotted, uh, the, the racer sideways cars as well. That's 2.75. And then we have a professor motor, 3.54. So how, how, do I, how do I pick which one goes in the car? Well, as I mentioned in the Group C racing, we are using the 2.75 dog bone here, and we're having two of them. So realistically, what I'll probably do is I'll start off with maybe, you know, uh, a 1.9 here just to see, or maybe I'll even start off with the, do with the dog bone right here. Um, and then I'll probably start off with a small weight behind the motor as well, or maybe two of the small pucks basically, um, you know, in here, right? Kind of like, kind of like that. And what I've found is that on a lot of these cars, you can remove the front weight uh, and the car, it gets a little bit more erratic, but the rear weights for me tend to be more stable and make the car a little bit more uh, soft. They make the car a little bit more uh, subtle through the corner. It doesn't, it's not as reactive. But I would definitely for this class run some sort of weight front to back. And I'm just going to keep all my weight on the pod. I'm probably not going to put it on the pods or the front end. I'm going to run as little weight as possible. And my goal will be to basically just tame the car on corner exit. And that's the entire premise of the ballast. So now that we have the rear end mocked up, we have the front end mocked up, we have the guide mocked up. What's next? Um, I am choosing the slotted SP45 wiring connector for this race. Because we have a handout motor, I'm gonna wanna be able to swap those at the track easily. So the SP45 is really nice. The, the wire on these new ones is really flexible, um, really nice wire. And then this connector here allows me to hot swap the motors pretty easily. So that's what I'm gonna install. So what have we accomplished today? Well, what we've done is we've established the parts that are gonna to need to be on the, the finished car. We've figured out what wheels we're gonna run, what tires we're gonna run. And the next video, I'm going to be putting that all together and finalizing everything by gluing the wheels and tires, truing the tires, and then uh, I'll walk you through wiring the car. And the last step will be painting the body. So soon enough, we'll have a potentially race winning MR slot car.